Hey everyone, Katie Freeman here with Freeman Furnishings. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the design process and build process for this live edge slab desk that I made for some very special clients of mine. So let's go ahead and get started with the design process. So this was a different kind of project for me. Like I said, it was my first commission piece. So the clients came to me and they said they wanted a desk and they wanted it to be kind of raw, natural, industrial. So what I did is I just went to trusty old Pinterest. I looked up some live edge desks, looked up some uh, steel table legs and went over those with my client to figure out what exactly they were looking for. Um, they decided they really liked the look of a little lighter wood, so we, we uh, thought most likely we're probably going to go with maple. Um, and just for my purposes, I went ahead and kind of just did a little sketch up. There's a live edge um, tabletop, and uh, we went with um, A-frame legs with a cross beam across. And forgive my sketching skills. Um, I just like to use this little program just to give myself an idea when I'm thinking through a project. So I took my clients uh, to a local sawmill with me. I thought that would be best. It was a good experience for them too, because as we were talking about lighter woods, you know, of course there's maple, uh, which is what we thought we would like, but we saw other things while we were there. Um, there was some cedar, there was some hackberry, there was some white oak. And you know, this just gave them a chance to really look at a piece and say, hey, that's super unique. I really like that. I wanna see that in my space and let's go with that. So they picked this piece that had the crack in the middle. I used some files and some chisels uh, to get out the softest wood. There was some dry rot in it, so I did have to remove more than I expected, but it, it came out well. And then to get the bark off the edge, I want to leave as much of the live edge as possible. So I'm using a draw knife just to get the bark off. This end of the slab had some kind of deep cracks in it. Uh, there were parts that it looked like they were probably going to come out and they did. Uh, so I'm using an Arbor, Arbor Tech turbo plane here just to round over the edge. Um, uh, get rid of some of the pieces that I figured were going to be coming off anyways. And now it's time to pour the epoxy into the crack of the slab. So I'm just using a two-part epoxy that's uh, measured out equal volume to each other. And giving it a thorough stir before we pour. I'm gonna have links to all of the products and tools that I used uh, down below in the video. So please feel free to go check those out. I pretty much purchased almost everything through Amazon. All right, so whatever I couldn't directly get into the crevices with pouring, I'm just using a little spatula to get everything uh, evened out and down there, and then using the torch to get rid of the surface bubbles. While curing, uh, some pretty decent sized cracks and bubbles did uh, appear. And so I went ahead and before it was fully cured, so before 24 hours, I used the torch uh, to kind of heat it up and soften it up a little bit and remove some of the surface bubbles. Then I used a drill to go after some of the more severe cracks in the larger end. I'm just trying to drill through the crack uh, because I know I'm going to refill it with resin, uh, so it will be hidden then. So I mixed up a little bit more resin and just poured it over the areas that I had to do the touch-up on um, with the cracked resin. Plus there were a few areas that throughout the curing process the resin sunk below uh, the top level of the, the wood. So now I needed uh, to remove any of the excess resin. I want the resin just to be in the center in the crack, not across the whole slab. Um, so I'm using a 14 inch Porter Cable uh, belt sander. It took a long time, but uh, overall really the belt sander made quick work of it compared to using like an orbital sander. 
Um, now it's time to apply the finish. So I had shown a couple different uh, finishing uh, samples to my clients and they decided that they really liked the Rubio Monocoat oil finish. Um, and you know what, I really did too. This is my first project uh, of this size using the oil on and it's really super easy to uh, put on. You just use the spreader and then you remove any excess immediately and you let it uh, sit and cure. It's it's that easy. It's a super durable finish. Um, I really like the look of it. It doesn't golden the wood too much. And then of course, you know, we all need to have a little fun around the shop. Uh, I had some things I need to pick up. Trying to improve on my basketball skills, which um, if you can't tell from this video, absolutely suck. But I'm going for it. All right, third time's a charm, woohoo! Okay, so I have the top down done. Now I need to go on to the beam. So the sawmill didn't have any more of the hard maple currently on hand. Um, so I picked up some of this hackberry, which when I was at the sawmill with the clients, they had seen a bigger slab of hackberry and they thought it looked pretty cool. So I figured um, it would do just fine. Uh, so I don't have a table saw, so I'm just using my uh, skill saw, circular saw to cut down uh, this piece of wood. I need a beam that is just four inches wide. That's the width of the brackets on the A-frame. So I use the circular saw, cut it down to just over four inches wide, and um, then I decided to use the hand plane. And I did use the belt sander a little bit too uh, to get it just down to like very slightly, like an eighth of an inch under four inches wide. And you know what, sometimes I find it nice to take a break from the power tools, use some hand tools again. Um, I don't know, I guess I find it just relaxing and it helps me kind of just connect with the piece a little bit more. So just like with the top, I decided to use the Rubio Monocoat uh, finish on the beam as well. Again, it doesn't really golden the wood, so I like that. Uh, it really lets the natural shade of the wood shine through. And this hackberry was pretty cool. It has like little ribbons of green in it, which is really awesome. And then it was time for assembly. So I just went to Lowe's and I picked up these construction lag screws. I figured they would be best. And I did need to pre-drill, so I'm not showing that here in the video, but I did pre-drill for the assembly of um, the beam and, and for screwing into the top. This is pretty slick using the, the lag screws for sure. And you'll see that the, the leg uh, plate there has slots in it and that's to allow for wood movement. So as the wood expands and contrasts with moisture, the screws can move also. So you shouldn't get cracks in the top. And then I'm finishing it up with Howard's Feed and Wax. I really love using this product as as my finisher on top of any finish really. Um, just provides a nice little extra sheen to it and who doesn't love that orange oil smell? Last but not least I'm putting on my brand. So I picked up this electric branding iron from Gearheart Industry. You can find them on Instagram. It's pretty cool. It's just very satisfying to be able to put your brand on the final product. I'm really happy with how this project turned out. It was my first commission piece. The design process was a little bit different for me, but overall I really do like this desk and I think my clients are going to be really happy with it for years to come. If you liked watching the design process and build process for this project and you want to see more projects in the future, please subscribe to my channel down below. Thanks for watching. Bye.